Every year on August 15th, Poland celebrates the Armed Forces Day, a national holiday that commemorates the 1920 victory over Russia at the Battle of Warsaw during the Polish-Soviet War. Now, Polish officials have said this year's parade will demonstrate strength, agency and unity in the face of threats from the East. Now, Joining me right now to talk about Poland and regional security is Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs Radosław Sikorski. Sir, thank you very much for joining us Hello. tonight. Now, this hard-won Polish victory over a century ago, which many at the time believed was impossible, in fact, saved Europe from Russian imperialism. Minister, is Ukraine today in the same position that Poland was then? Yes, there, is, there are some parallels. Uh, we were helped at the time by our Western allies. We, had, uh, we received equipment uh, uniforms from France, uh, ammunition from others, uh, and Ukraine is getting considerable support. Uh, we could do even more. Um, uh, and Ukraine is resisting very bravely, and hopefully the result will be similar. Well, that's right. Now, speaking of Ukraine, we have to mention Kursk incursion that happened just the days before. Now, has the Kursk offensive change the overall state of the war? I mean, is the, the outlook of the potential negotiations, peace negotiations, closer than, than we thought? It's too early to say, but it certainly um, uh, showed that Ukraine is capable of counterattacking, that Ukraine has maneuverable forces. It seems that Russia is being forced to draw forces away from the Donetsk front, relieving the, the, the mm -hmm. brave Ukrainian soldiers fighting there. Uh, it's showing uh, those in the West who doubted uh, that Ukraine can um, uh, stay the course uh, that Ukraine can go on the counteroffensive. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a morale boost to the Ukrainians themselves. Uh, so at a time when there is first the, there is talk of negotiations, it has certainly strengthened Ukraine's hand. Well, that's what I want to ask you. But do you think this situation is going to is this, the, this leverage that Ukraine has is going to bring Russia maybe to be more open to negotiations talk? Hopefully. Um, uh, wars are never linear. Um, uh, in, 19, uh, in 2022, uh, Ukraine was on the offensive. Uh, last year, it recovered um, half of the previously occupied territory. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, Russia has regained initiative, but now we have a change of... Uh, uh, of the situation again. Um, we don't yet know, mm -hmm. but I am convinced that if uh, Ukraine and we, uh, friends of Ukraine, stay the course, then eventually the Russian economy will uh, suffer the consequences and eventually, hopefully, Putin will see that he cannot achieve his war aims. But do you think that this is time for the world's diplomacy to, to play in? Well, that depends on, uh, on Russia. Uh, so far, Russia has uh, not really called for negotiations, but for Ukraine's capitulation, which, was, which is obviously unacceptable to the Ukrainian side. Um, at, the, at the moment, the negotiations are taking place on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Now, you recently cautioned European allies um, that they should prepare for U.S., perhaps a shift, potential shift in U.S. approach to European security, regardless of who becomes the next um, U.S. president. Now, in early September, um, President, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is going to select a new candidate um, for a new dedicated defense portfolio. She's going to in early, in early September. Now, what should be the main task for the new commissioner for defense? Is it just coordinating procurement for military equipment, or perhaps there is space for more? Well, there are several issues here. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, yes, Europe should become uh, more serious about uh, uh, being able to defend itself. I uh, spent years talking about it from the rostrum at the European Parliament. And yes, successive. Uh, U.S. presidents from both parties. Remember, pivot to Asia uh, mm -hmm. by uh, Barack Obama. A and, of course, uh, President Trump's uh, uh, confrontational talk vis-a-vis -vis China. Uh, so the long-term trend seems to be for America to pay more attention to the Pacific. And Europe should be aware of that. And thank God we have at last started spending uh, more on defense. Poland has been doing mm -hmm. its bit for years, but others have. 
Um, and as regards the um, uh, portfolio, remember that uh, the European Union already has a defense mm -hmm. commissioner. He is called High Representative for Foreign and Defense and Security Policy. Mm -hmm. And Europe already conducts uh, military operations all over Africa, for example. And it's the high rep who gives the political uh, command to do so. Um, but there is still plenty to do for a new uh, commissioner, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, military procurement is one thing, but there is cyber security. There is civil protection, protecting. We see these horrible pictures of, of uh, civilian infrastructure being hit by the Russians and civilians suffering because there are not sh no shelters. Um, and there are other aspects of security, such as military mobility across the continent, that I think could be put together into a substantive portfolio. But should a commissioner, this co the commissioner for defense, should that person perhaps mobilize countries in the region to spend more on the defense? Because Poland, like you said, it's 4%. In 2025, Poland wants to spend 5%. But other countries in the area are not on the same page. Uh, I think uh, if, if everybody in Europe spent what our uh, eastern flank spends, we would be in a good place. Now, the, I think the problem is with, with richer countries further west, mm -hmm. uh, for whom we are providing defense at our own expense. Right. Uh, this is why I'm such a strong supporter of European defense budget, wonderfully called the European Peace Facility, because it is accessed fairly. On, in proportion to GDP. If Putin is a threat to all of Europe, then all of Europe should proportionately spend money to uh, deter that threat. But do you think Europe will spend proportionally? Well, that's how we contribute to the EPF, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which should be increased uh, many times. Uh, the only trouble with it is that one country, Hungary, is uh, blocking the disbursements from EPF to... Um, uh, refund countries for the assistance that they've given to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Now, recently we have seen a revival of the tri um, triangle, Weimar Triangle, especially Poland-German relationships, which have not been as good in the past um, years. Now, 13 years ago, um, you said in Berlin, I fear German power less than German in action. What is your opinion right now? I, I, uh, I think uh, this, well, this was... Uh, uh, said at the time of the European financial crisis, but I think it e applies equally to the assistance uh, for Ukraine. Uh, Germany actually does a lot in absolute numbers, the most in Europe, but it somehow manages to convey the impression of being tardy, of, of doing the right thing six months later, and, and, then, and it's not as useful. So yes, I still uh, worry about... Uh, about German uh, inaction more than about German power. But do you speak about it with your German counterparts of course, about that? Of course. Can you tell us more about the uh, conversation? What are they saying? Well, they have a coalition too, and, uh, and the Greens uh, and the foreign ministers from the Green Party, Annalena Baerbock, was against Nord Stream before it became fashionable. Uh, she, she got quite a lot of flack in Germany for opposition to that political investment. Uh, so she, as you can imagine, she has a lot of credit with me. Uh, and, uh, and the Greens are on the whole uh, sound on Ukraine. Uh, but there are, there are other parts of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of Nord Stream, we have learned recently that German p prosecutors have asked um, Poland for assistant, assistance to detain Ukrainian person that they suspect um, blew up the Nord Stream in, back in 2022. And I have to bring up that controversial tweet that you wrote. Um, thank you, USA. Now it seems that it might have been a Ukrainian special operation. What is your take on that and what does Poland know well, about it? Well, that's a good question to the prosecution authorities, but American newspapers say that the United States had foreknowledge of the operation. So perhaps there are reasons for gratitude after all. <laughs> now, sir, finally I want to ask you, um, like we said, the war in Ukraine is right outside of our borders. We also face numerous um, hybrid attacks. You also once said, when you resumed the duty of uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, you said diplomacy is the first line of defense of our republic. What are the goals of Polish diplomacy in the context of regional security? Well, to keep the war as far away from our borders as possible. And how are and we doing with that? Well, by helping Ukraine, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and and secondly to um, um, make the uh, the alliance we are in uh, NATO so uh, powerful as to um, uh, deter Putin from even thinking about starting a war with us. And I think we're quite successful at, uh, at both tasks. But I think the public, because when, when we are seeing the pictures from Ukraine, when we are talking about the hybrid attacks, Polish society is worried, and the people who live in Poland and in the region, um, what would you say to them? Well, the uh, source of that threat is uh, Vladimir Putin's Russia. Uh, when Russia threatens us, unfortunately, we've learned from a long historical rec record to, to believe them. And that's why we need to uh, uh, make our society more resilient. That's why we have a record, record uh, spending on defense. That's why uh, we've just had a successful anniversary NATO summit. Um, and that's why we consult with allies about uh, how to deter uh, any aggressive Russian plans. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think uh, Putin has succeeded in his uh, original war aims. Uh, and uh, if Ukraine wins, and we should do everything to help it, um, it's, a, it's a chance not only for Ukraine, but also for Russia to think itself afresh and to uh, to drop these uh, ridiculous neo-imperial pretensions. Mm -hmm. Now, I will also like to ask you about participation in NATO's and nuclear sharing. Where are we with that? We have been talking about it the a while ago. The less spoken, the better. All right. Okay, and finally, I would like to ask you about Andrei Pochobuts because it was also a quite controversial moment for Poland uh, when we talked about the historical prisoner swap um, that we participated in. Joe Biden thanked us for it. Um, but many said we did not, we gave up Pablo Gonzalez, but we did not get anyone in return. You said yourself that when it comes to Andrei Pochobut, that issue is on a different path that you're negotiating. Then a few days later, you said that um, Poland is going to open border crossings with Belarus if they give us Poland Andrei Pochobut. Where are we with that? I mean, is this, is this an instrument, is this a tool that we are negotiating with, the border crossing? Well, uh, uh, Andrei Pochobut has been unfairly uh, kept in jail under trumped-up charges by the Belarusian uh, dictatorship for three years. Uh, the previous government, unfortunately, wasn't able to get him out, and it was the previous government which closed a particular border crossing mm -hmm. uh, as a response uh, to, uh, to the jailing of Andrzej Pochobut. And I'm continuing that, that policy. Um, uh, and it's up to uh, Lukashenko to start uh, releasing uh, political prisoners, including Andrzej Pochobut. But what is Poland doing to do? To I've just to told you. OK, well, sir, thank you very much um, for joining us tonight here on TVP World. Thank you. And thank you for watching World News Tonight. Stay with us for more.